playing with power. So I, I want to talk about Amiibo first, just very, very briefly, because we are less than two weeks away from the last two announced Amiibo in the Super Smash Brothers line. Not and, just Super Smash Brothers line, in existence, because yeah. we finally got those Shovel Knight Amiibo, which were always looming over yeah. as, as potentially the last one. So even though there were future Smash Amiibo coming... We always knew that at least there were the three Shovel Knight ones. And now yep. there are only two known Amiibo quantities in the world. Yep. It is Richter Belmont and Dark Samus. The last two non-DLC Amiibo. Nothing else has been confirmed. Nintendo, uh, from the start, said that every Smash character would get an Amiibo. Um, I'm still nervous. And I've, I've mentioned this on other podcasts, too. Um, I'm still nervous to a certain degree that we might not see Amiibo for those DLC fighters. And if we do, it might be different. I do have a prediction that Amiibo are going to be slightly different after this next wave. And Dif Different in terms of the release schedule, the release forecast, or the actual figure themselves? Part of me feels that potentially with this newest wave of DLC, Nintendo might go another route, whether that be Amiibo 2.0, Amiibo cards, customized Amiibo me fighters that you can put other characters on. I, I feel like Nintendo has been winding down on Amiibo production now for some time. Yeah. Um, I went to Target a couple days ago and I found a Simon Belmont Amiibo on clearance. And two, three years ago, that would never, ever happen. You would not see a Smash Amiibo that wasn't Pikachu or Mario on a shelf ever, especially a new wave. And I have found every single one of the new wave Amiibo at several stores. They are not flying off the shelves the way they used to. And I think Nintendo knows that. And I feel like because we haven't gotten an announcement, it makes me feel like we're going to see a different kind of rollout structure or potentially a new kind of format entirely. Um, I would like to see Nintendo try to do something a bit different. I mean, obviously, I would want the same form factor, just for Smash at least. I want to complete that set and have the kind of exact same layout for everything that I have already. Um, but like I said before, I think my mind is just kind of going in a million different directions with this because we don't have any concrete information. I, I don't think since as long as Amiibo have been around, I don't think we've been in this position before where we are two weeks away from the complete unknown. And if we have another Nintendo Direct in the next week or two or three and they don't announce Amiibo, I am probably going to go into full like full on panic mode for the future of Amiibo. Yeah. So I, I, I'm open to your thoughts on this too. I think that Amiibo are done. I, I have thought it for a while. I was surprised by the Link's Awakening one, as I mentioned before, yeah. but I absolutely have no doubts that every single character who is in Smash Brothers DLC or otherwise is going to have an Amiibo because of Nintendo's commitment of not making any character more or less than. And they've demonstrated that throughout the history of the Smash Brothers line where they try to yeah. balance all of these characters so that it, things are not weighted more heavily in one character's direction, even so far as to have a lower profit margin on some of the early Amiibo because, as I read in, in an interview, creating a Bowser with yeah. all those different pieces is far more expensive than creating a Kirby, for example. But they decided yeah. because they don't, for appearance's sake, they don't want people to have the false impression that Bowser is worth more than Kirby. They accepted a less money essentially so no matter what i th i believe that part and parcel with being a character in smash brothers ultimate is having an amiibo version of that character otherwise forever yeah. those characters will be separate and different and less than and i don't know that nintendo wants to send that message even though all of the dlc characters thus far are third party yep. and i still think that we are absolutely going to see Amiibo versions of them. Although, if you recall back to the Wii U era, as I'm sure yeah. you do, how long did it take after the promise of Cloud Corn and Bayonetta for them to release? Something like yeah, two I mean, that, years? I that gap was, was insane. 
So maybe <clears> we're <throat> looking at another insane gap here. We don't really know exactly. So some small details have slipped through over the past few years since the yeah. inception of Amiibo about how the production actually works and turning the molds over in the different factories, which we know are in China where manufacturing is really streamlined. Yeah. But from the point in which you – and we get we got some insight into this with the re-releases. From the point at which you remove all of the infrastructure to be able to then re make that same character after things have already been turned over, something like a four month time span. So we don't really know what stage in the amiibo process they are right now. They might not have even created a physical prototype, but I, I would, imagine you would hope they would. I mean, you would, if I, I, I feel like we are not going to have a repeat of cloud corn Bayonetta. And I feel like that's not going to happen for a very specific reason. And that is if they do decide to do amiibo, for all of these DLC fighters, which I'm 99% sure they're going to. The 1% of doubt keeps me up at night to a certain degree. <laughs> but because they confirmed that another batch of DLC is coming out on top of this, I can't imagine that they would put themselves in a position to be that far behind. Um, especially with six Amiibo in this wave, a potential six in another wave. I mean, 12 new figures over the span of, what, a year? A year and a half? Maybe two years? I feel like they're going to have to start spacing that out now. Um, they kind of set up this thing where they are doing Amiibo for Smash every two months. So we're going to get Amiibo hopefully in January. Well, we are. In, we in are. In two weeks. And then we should see February off and then another batch in March. March is always nuts because Nintendo has an absolutely crazy release schedule for the most part in March. So <clears throat> I'm expecting the wave after this one, if we do get DLC fighter amiibo, um, I expect it to come out the same day as animal crossing. Um, Nintendo loves to do that in March. It's happened every March from as far back as I can remember where they release everything on one day. So I'm at least at this point, I'm going to predict that we're going to see the first wave of DLC fighters I imagine it's going to be Joker first, maybe one more. Maybe they're going to go two at a time on March 20th. Do you think there's any chance that they drop all four on the same day? I mean, they'd have to drop six, right? Oh, five, five, five. Because we already have Piranha Plant. We have Piranha Plant, but he was a bonus, wasn't he? So yeah, we so need, we need Joker. DLC. We need Joker, Banjo, um, why, why am I spacing here? Hero and t Hero and Terry, and then Hero, Unknown. Terry, Unknown. I thought there was six for some reason, but yeah, I guess five. So five in one day, I think, would be insane. Um, Although, still... that's in the history of Smash releases, that's a modest day. Like, if you look back to the first March of Amiibo releases, where we had, like, uh, what was that, Wave 4? Yeah. That was, in, that was crazy. It was like seven or eight Amiibo, four exclusives. Uh, speaking of exclusives, I think that's more likely the kind of change that we're going to see because, as you said, if Simon Belmonts are sitting on the shelves in America, yeah. then Nintendo is having a, a supply and demand issue where there are just – they're too plentiful. And Nintendo – I think at the same point too – I oh, go ahead. You know, I, I'm going to let you finish that thought. So Nintendo has notoriously not wanted to get stuck paying – to, to warehouse inventory. Yeah. So what seems the most likely is not that they're not going to make them, but that they're going to change their rollout strategy where they either release them in smaller numbers or they make them as store exclusives so that they can get s some kind of upfront stipend yeah. to be able to offset some of the storage costs because Nintendo does not pay for any Amiibo to wind up in store. So like those Simon Belmont sitting on the shelf, Nintendo already got their money. The store yeah. bought those. So the store is eating the cost on that. And it, it will Amiibo drive traffic into your store in 2020. I don't really know that they will, but I don't think it would hurt if a store can negotiate a good rate to be able to be the only person to be able to have a Banjo Kazooie Amiibo. People yeah. would go to that store and they would buy that Amiibo and hopefully uh, from that store's perspective, they walk out with some other stuff as well. But I expect the supply to go down with the 
the, the variable that all these are third party characters. So you imagine these companies are also participating in the profits of how many of these are sold. Yeah. So they probably want everybody who wants to buy them to be able to buy them and figure out exactly what that number is, is harder now in, in the twilight of Amiibo than I think it's ever been. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with this. We have most of the heavy hitters from Nintendo. The characters that mom and dad might walk into a store not knowing a thing about Amiibo and pick one of these up for their kids because it's Mario or it's Pikachu. Yeah. We are scraping. I, I, this is going to sound bad. I don't mean it poorly in any of these characters because I love them to death. We are scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the characters from a wide understanding. So well, sure. Richter said, is probably going to be the most obscure amiibo that yes. anybody purchases in America because there was never really any big console release with Richter in it. That he was in a Japanese only exclusive game until I believe, unless I'm messing this up, the Wii or the Wii U virtual console. Yeah. So you you had to have gone out of your way and sought a game that included Richter to yeah. be able to even be aware of who he is. I think it's so great he's in yeah. the game, and I'm going to buy him, and his Amiibo looks amazing, but he is he's the for us, epitome though. of obscure. He he is for you and I. He is for dedicated Smash Brothers Amiibo collectors. Yeah. And that's it. And we're going to get him, and, and that's it. This is not for anybody else. Nope. And I feel like with the DLC fighters, we're going to see something similar. And, and not necessarily across the board. I do have a, a change of thought. And on a previous podcast, I mentioned that I don't think we'd ever see a four pack for Hero. Um, however, I've changed my mind on that. Um, after looking at the sales numbers of Dragon Quest in Japan, it's absolutely gangbusters. Yeah. Like it's it's nuts. So I don't see Square saying, you know, let's just do one of these if they do. I could imagine them doing a four pack and it doing extremely well in Japan and doing decently here, nowhere near as much as I think it would do in Japan. Or um, they do what they have done a few times and release it only in Japan. And so you can get... That would be a disaster. I, I feel like if they did that, I think there'd be a lot of very upset people. Yes, there would be. But when in the history of Amiibo has Nintendo shied away from making people very, very upset? Like that's part and parcel with the experience of being an Amiibo collector is... Yeah. Is I mean, how besides difficult Monster Hunter, besides Monster Hunter, some QB. very, very obscure cards, which I imported like a flippin' idiot and spent more money than I care to admit on doing You're that. Amiibo Jason. If and anyone QB. is going to do it, it's you, QB. And then also the the four pack for Breath of the Wild was an exclusive for a while. In, in, I believe yeah. it also and released it came in, in, it came in up the in UK. Europe, then. But it never um, went stateside, although you could buy all of them individually. But I, I can't imagine a world where they take a Smash Amiibo and they say, you can only get it if you live here. Well, they did do it once already. And it that was, was with Rob. Sort of. Yeah. So, but they released it here. It Eventually, took some time. And but they, they had to determine that there was the demand. Which there was. And not from me, because I imported it the moment I could. Of which course. Was instantly. Yes. Um, <laughs> but I think it's going to do gangbusters there. I, I think I think the same is going to be said for, for um, Joker in Japan. I think Joker is going to do okay here. Um I, I do wonder think... how many non-Smash players that are just Persona fans will want a Persona Amiibo because of the scarcity of Persona ancillary merchandise. I mean, the other, the closest thing you can get right now is a Figma. Um, if you're not familiar, Figma is by Good Smile, and they are incredibly high-quality figures. And um, incredibly I, I... expensive. These figures sell for yeah. like 70 bucks. So if you could... Right off the bat, yeah. yeah. If you could like get... 60 or 70 bucks. A $15 Amiibo, which is... It's compact. The sculpts are phenomenal. You can just sit this little trophy on your shelf or on your desk, and there you go. You have a representation of your Persona fandom right there. Yeah. And I, I hate to say this, too, but I also feel the same way about Banjo. Sure. Um, we are not in early 2000s anymore. And as much as I love Banjo, and I love Banjo, I'm looking over... I just picked up the, I got the Banjo plush set for my mother-in-law for, for Christmas from FanGamer. Awesome. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's <laughs> looking amazing. I love that thing to death. I love Banjo. I cannot wait for a Banjo Amiibo. But 
once again, mom and dad, grandma and grandpa walking into a store, they're going to see a bear and a bird and not know what the heck it is. So I feel like from a sales figure that it's not going to do anything. And then finally, Terry is going to be sitting there forever. Nobody I know that is outside, like I have some friends who are big Neo Geo fans. And I, I do like Neo Geo to a certain extent, too. I've played King of Fighters. It's it's a decent game. Um, I'm going to be picking up Terry, obviously. But that's going to be another thing where I think Terry is going to be incredibly lonely on the shelf. And it's going to be for Amiibo collectors and SNK fans. And that's it. And if Simon Belmont... Simon flipping Belmont, the vampire slayer from so many amazing games, yeah. is sitting on a shelf. I can't imagine what poor fate is going to be uh, coming for our boy, Terry. So I think that's the state of Amiibo at right now. I think it's complete uncertainty. I do do think, think, do you believe that there is a chance that none of them wind up on the shelves ever and they just sit in an Amazon warehouse and that we're looking at more Amazon exclusives like female corn was at the conclusion of the Wii U line? Maybe. I mean, if anything, I could see Nintendo selling them directly through their club, my Nintendo store, if they're concerned about it. Um, but I think it's, we're at, we're at a weird time with Amiibo. There are so many figures. There's, there's pretty much a figure for almost every major property. If you're a Nintendo fan that you could possibly want with with some exceptions. Um, so pumping out more might be detrimental to the legacy of Amiibo. (laughs) 